Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In the world of warships, the aircraft carrier is king. First introduced back in the early 1920s, these massive seagoing fortresses are specifically designed to carry and store military airplanes, helicopters, and a wide array of other weaponry. Modern classes like the USS Nimitz weigh over 100,000 tons and measure around 1,000 feet long. However, though they have big capabilities, aircraft carriers are also big targets. Enemy aircraft, ships, and submarines are a constant threat to any aircraft carrier. And in order to keep the 3,000 to 5,000 people on board safe, crew members need to practice ship maneuvering drills frequently. All naval vessels do this, and aircraft carriers are specially equipped for the job. For one, they can move at speeds of up to 30 knots, which is impressive for such a massive vessel. They can also change their course and speed suddenly enough to throw off any potential attack. Here, you can see a Nimitz-class carrier, one of the largest nuclear-powered carriers in the U.S. Navy, practicing some of these high-speed evasive maneuvers. When looking at the massive wake left trailing behind the vessel and the degree to which it is able to turn, it's hard to believe that this is a ship roughly the same size as the Chrysler building. Indeed, this ship can travel within 700 square miles in just 30 minutes. In an hour and a half, this ship could be anywhere within a 6,000-mile area. While aircraft carriers are designed for autonomy, they operate in what is known as strike groups, Attacking a strike group would be an extremely dangerous move for even the most well-equipped foe. Within minutes of detecting an enemy vessel or aircraft, the carrier could launch dozens of planes and helicopters to patrol the area. The other ships would also spring into action to protect themselves and the carrier, dropping depth charges on suspected submarines, launching torpedoes, and firing heavy guns at incoming attackers.
In the late 1990s and early 2000s, navies all around the world were focusing their efforts on developing ships with stealth technology. The stealth fighter and stealth bomber had just been unveiled, and military engineers were enthralled with the idea of having radar evading vessels. Each vessel differs in its approach to concealing its signature, but generally, stealth ships incorporate acoustic dampening, wake reduction, and radar cross-section reduction technology. One of the most famous U.S. stealth ships is the Zumwalt-class destroyer. These ships utilize a sloped hull to reduce radar visibility and harness a noise-reducing integrated electric propulsion system. This electricity focus is a big factor in what sets the Zumwalt apart. You're talking about all electrical powered ship. On top of that is all electrical propulsion ship. So your load for DDG-1000 just skyrocketed. To be able to support that, what you need to have is higher voltage so you can support that load. It's uh, instantaneous power on demand based on whatever the conditions are, whether you're in a firefight or peacetime steaming. You can do with it what you need to do with it. It's in the engineer's dream. It is important to note that the Zumwalt and its sister ships were not without their problems. For instance, a full-sized aircraft carrier typically costs around $12 billion to produce. The Zumwalt, however, cost a third of that per unit on top of the program development costs, which were $22.5 billion by the time it was abandoned. All in all, the Zumwalt lacked air defense capabilities and was not well suited to its role as a naval destroyer. As of 2016, the U.S. Navy had abandoned the design in favor of producing more Arleigh Burke destroyers. Arleigh Burke refers to a class of guided missile destroyers built around the Aegis combat system. These multi-mission vessels boast powerful radar, surface-to-air and anti-sub weapons, and even a harpoon missile launcher. Though not fully stealthy, they feature a reduced radar signature and are extremely difficult to detect when cruising. Unlike the Zumwalt, nearly every inch of an Arleigh Burke deck bristles with weaponry. Not only is it well equipped to defend itself and its crew, but other fleet members as well. The last line of defense when it comes to aircraft carrier defense at sea is the aircraft carrier itself. To ensure the vessel's hull and equipment can withstand any attacks they may face, the Navy will perform what is known as shock trials. This is where live explosives will be set off near the ship to see how it reacts. Shock testing is critical to preparing new or refitted vessels for deployment. 
when it comes to aircraft carriers, other systems need to be checked as well. Examples include EMOS testing, which is when various evaluations are done on the electromagnetic aircraft launching system. This is sometimes done with a dead load, which can end up being launched hundreds of yards into the sea. While admittedly frightful for the crew, this type of testing may save their lives one day. As navies worldwide pursue the construction of increasingly advanced ships, testing methods for their certification will continue to become more rigorous. After all, these mammoth vessels are meant to protect not only the thousands of crew members and million-dollar vessels on board, but also the integrity of a whole nation. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.